Are you ready to revolutionize your e-commerce checkout experience and significantly boost your conversion rates? This episode is a must listen. We have a special guest who is a trailblazer in the e-commerce and payment space. Welcome back listeners to another exciting episode of Talk Commerce. I'm your host, Brent Peterson, and today's guest is none other than Linda Sue, the Chief Commercial Officer at Skipify. Linda has a fascinating career journey that took her from finance and banking to co-founding Cart.com and now leading the charge at Skipify. In this episode, Linda talks about how Skipify is enhancing the e-commerce landscape, making online transactions smoother, more secure, and incredibly user-friendly. She shares her insights on the importance of authorization rates, the role of personalized shopping experiences, and the future of e-commerce platforms. Whether you're a merchant looking to improve your checkout process or an e-commerce enthusiast like myself, eager to stay ahead of the industry trends, Linda's expertise is something you don't want to miss. So stick around and we'll explore the cutting edge innovations that are setting new standards in the e-commerce world with Linda Sue. Subscribe to Talk Commerce wherever you listen to podcasts or see us on our YouTube channel. Talk Commerce is brought to you by Content Basis. Content Basis beta program for commerce customers is open. Your product page is the most important page on your website. What are you doing to make it better? Go to contentbasis.io to learn more. That's contentbasis.io. You're listening to Talk Commerce. Subscribe and download at talk-commerce.com. Welcome to this episode of Talk Commerce. Today I have Linda Sue. She is the Chief Commercial Officer at Skipify. Linda, go ahead, introduce yourself, tell us your day-to-day -day role and one of your passions in life. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Brent. I'm Linda. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer at Skipify, and my background is uh, kind of an atypical story of going into entrepreneurship in my current role. I actually started my career in finance. I was uh, an investor and a banker to start off my career. And I, I actually loved it. You know, I loved investing and the, the strategic mindset that we were able to build. Um, but a huge part of me thought, hey, I need to be an operator in order to be a good investor. Um, and so I made the switch into operating entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, small businesses. I actually started in food and bev and moved over to e-com. Um, and then I had this awesome opportunity to co-found a company. Uh, the company is called cart.com. Uh, some of you may know it. I don't know if you do. Um, E-commerce technology and services. And we were able to grow that from about five people to 1,300 people by the time um, I left. And I was the chief growth officer there leading BD and partnerships and also the co-founder. Um, and now I'm at Skipify as the chief commercial officer. And We'll talk a lot more about Skipify and why I'm here, um, but in my day-to-day -day role, I lead our sales, marketing, account management, and channel partnerships. And what that means is I get to evangelize the Skipify name and the product and the solution and the platform that we're building and try to bring it to as big of an audience as possible. Um, I'm super excited about what we have here, and so I want the broader industry, the merchants and the shoppers to know about it. So that's, that's what I do here. That's great. And uh, passions, uh, passions in life. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Sometimes you get so in the weeds of company building, but it's, it's, you know, and, and it is absolutely something that I'm, I'm passionate about, but outside of, of the career and job side of things, uh, I have a little toddler, a, she's 19 months today. So that's absolutely where my heart is. Um, I get pretty excited about a lot of things. Uh, very randomly, you know, I like going crabbing. I'm in the Bay Area, so that's a really big thing in kind of November season, Dungeness crabs. Um, I like Pilates, hiking, all the nature things that you might expect being out here. Well, that's fun. Crabbing. You're my first person who's had a passion for crabbing. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm envisioning that you, you have to get in the water and kind of dive down and you're bringing uh, up crab. You know, I can't say I'm super athletic in that way. So I don't want the audience to envision me going into the water and grabbing a crab. Although that'd be <laughs> really freaking cool. No, it's, 
actually as passive of a sport as possible. You literally, you know, grab this crate and you drop it into the water with some, you know, bait and you go get a coffee, you walk away and you come back and you lift it back out of the water. So, but I would actually really recommend it to everyone. It's, uh, it's, it's so random, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a, it's a good way to get in inexpensive crabs as well, right? It's not, you wouldn't do it for the <laughs> ROI. I don't think. Um, right. you, you do it for the fun. You do it for the fun. But yeah, you might uh, get it. Absolutely. Movie. Okay, Linda. So uh, before we get started on our content, you have graciously volunteered to be part of the free joke project. I'm going to tell you a joke. All you have to do is give me a rating one through five. So here we go. And actually, we're going to have a couple jokes today because uh, this is our special. Can't wait. I just got hired at the guillotine factory. I'll be heading there tomorrow. Okay. Okay. A little dark. A little dark, but I like it. I I like it. I I give it a a four. All right. Good. Yeah. Here we go. We're gonna dark. keep going. Uh, anyway, I was out with my young daughter and ran into a friend I had not seen in years. This is Beth. I said, introducing my daughter. And what's Beth short for? He asked. Because she's only three. I replied. Yeah, it it takes a little bit. It, it takes a little bit. So I I would say this one's like a three, a three. Okay, good, yeah. That's uh that's a think. Most of my jokes are thinking jokes. Thinker. So yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah. Okay, got yeah. a, I got two more, and then we'll be done. Okay. I was so broke I couldn't afford to pay my electrical bill. Those were the dark days. I do like that one. I do like that one. I, I would give that a, a solid four, four and a half. All right, good. I got a math joke yeah. for you. Okay, I do like math. 85% of Americans don't know how to do basic math. Thank God I'm part of the other 25%. That's cute. I, I like that one. I like that one. I, I give it a solid four as well. Okay, okay last one. <laughs> I was abducted by aliens. They made me wash my hands, clean my room, and eat my vegetables. Turns out I was on the mothership. <laughs> Okay, I, you know, I, we, yeah, I, I would give that a five. That's hilarious. <laughs> so for your, um, for your young child soon, you can yes. say that. Yes, you know, you know your audience. All right. Well, so let's, let's talk about Skipify. Tell us a little bit about uh, Skipify and how, uh, well, tell us kind of the underlying solution that it sol or the problem that it solves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Skipify is in the e-commerce technology and payment space. Um, and my background is in e-com, and I've had the opportunity to build e-commerce businesses, as well as build companies that provide e-commerce technology and services. Um, so, you know, what Skipify does is we we provide a next-gen, um, what we call the connected wallet. So think of it as the next um, generation digital wallet that um, helps it easier, safer, um, better to transact online. Um, so if you think about the typical online experience today, uh, you might be clicking a button, you might be form filling, actually 70% of plus of people are still putting in their credit card, debit card, right? And what Skipify has enabled merchants and shoppers to do is essentially using some unique identifier, let's say an email address, right? I'm using Brent's personal email address, and uh, through Skipify's partnership with financial institutions, right, we're able to bring in your credit card and debit card information securely, quickly, right, and allow you to use those cards at checkout. And it almost, we, we want it to feel like magic. And, you know, it, it certainly does, right? So even if you've never transacted with that merchant before, um, you are able to see your credit cards and know that it's securely provided literally in real time from the card issuers and networks that you probably already have accounts with, right? American Express, as an example, or Visa. So is this available across all the platforms? And I can think of at least one that has really locked down their payment system. Is it, are you, are you, able to plug into all the different platforms? Yeah, we we are e-commerce platform agnostic. 
and processor agnostic. So we do work across many of them, many of the major ones, um, and you know, on our way to getting into even more and more ecosystems. Uh, so it is a unique differentiator of ours that we're able to kind of flex. We just kind of want to be where the merchants are, right? And the reality is they switch e-commerce platforms too, right? And so for us, how can we um, kind of serve this like win-win-win scenario where we're always there for the merchants, for this great experience for the shoppers, and we also bring in the financial institutions that you trust, right, to be a part of this. Um, I mean, e-commerce is, it's not even the next wave, it's here now, right? So how do we bring that all seamless together um, is, is, yeah, what we aim to do. Um, I know that uh, when, when everything started to go mobile, the biggest problem was, again, like having to put your credit card in on your mobile phone. I said, this yeah. really solves that problem where somebody's at a restaurant and they see something they'd like to buy and then they're just, oh, boom, you can, you can buy it and it's literally that easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I imagine, I mean, the number of times, you know, you wanted to buy something from a small local restaurant, right? And you want to support them, go on their website, try to purchase, and all of a sudden you're left with this crazy page where you have to fill in all of your information, right? And sometimes you're just like, oh man, I give up, or I don't have my credit card next to me, or, you know, whatever that scenario is. And, um, you go buy somewhere else, right? Um, or in the scenario, <laughs> this is a very top of mind for me. I mentioned I have a little toddler at home, but you know, let's say I'm a new mom or a new parent and I need to buy something quite quickly, right? Online. Um, it just would be so much easier if I didn't have to go to my wallet, which is in a completely different room, uh, and to be able to transact just by inputting my email address. And we also, uh, for the most part today, um, send a one-time passcode to your phone, right? So to your point of shopping on your mobile device, it's an extremely seamless experience. I think you're probably familiar with it, auto-populates, right, with the code. Um, and so instead of abandoning the cart or digging in through your purse, whatever that is, you can do it just through your phone, which is the experience that you know, we, we all kind of want, um, we want to make it as simple to shop online as it might be for when you're physically inside a store, right? We have this experience where you, you know, tap on a POS and the device recognizes that it's you and you can securely walk away, right? In just a couple of seconds. So that's the experience we want to bring to digital. I'm imagining that this helps the merchant to convert better. Um, do you have some illustrations on how that is, how how it how they're yeah. getting some benefit from it and maybe some rough statistics on yeah. what kind of uplift you see? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um it's certainly a question that's top of mind. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say, you know, e-commerce is easy, right? Retail is easy. It's it's not, and um, rightfully so. Merchants, right, uh, are scrupulous around right the the stats that that they get from their their vendors. So it is absolutely something an uplifting conversion is something that a lot of our uh, customers and prospects ask about. Um, so in a couple of ways, I would say we contribute to this. Uh, conversion uplift. One is through just our infrastructure, right? So what does this idea that we connect automatically to the financial institutions and partners bring in that data in real time, right? The credit card information, the um, billing address, some shopper details, right? How, what does that unique infrastructure enable in terms of results? And what we've been able to see is an increase in authorization rates. So basically, when you submit a payment online, it, are, is, are they saying yes or no to whether that payment gets accepted? And, you know, a lot of times that payment might get rejected. You've probably had this experience yourself of your billing address is incorrect, or maybe you fat fingered a, a credit card number. 
I do that you know, all the time, right? All these common decline reasons and, you know, some of the forms might not even tell you what went wrong, just tells you that it didn't go through, right? Because we're getting that information automatically from our partners and in real time, right? You're always getting the card that is going to work and go through. And so we've seen that authorization rate, which is typically markedly lower for card not present situations, right? So shopping online versus shopping in person, there's a huge gap in what that authorization rate is. And we've been able to close that gap pretty significantly. So within our merchant base, we're seeing that go up by around like four, five, six percent, um, which is extremely meaningful in contributing to your ultimate conversion uplift. Um, the other piece of it is, you know, we're also very proud of it, just the user experience in itself, right? We've, do, we've done a lot of A-B testing around UX um, to ensure that, okay, this is an experience that the shopper wants to go through as, as they check out, right? Some of our customers onboard us just because they like the streamlined, easy, you know, innovative type of UI that we've put in place. Um, and so our conversion uh, that we tout right now is around 9%. Of course, that impact could be, could be lower or higher, depending on the merchant itself. It's around 9%. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's a confl- it's a it's a mix of our infrastructure underlying what the product's able to do um, that increases authorization rates as well as the user experience component. I, I think a lot of times merchants think more about just their conversion. They don't think about authorization rates. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how important that is yeah. and why merchants should be asking about that authorization rate. Yeah, yeah, and um. You're right. Ultimately, it falls into conversion, though, right? So I think when merchants are thinking about conversion, it's a broader term, right, that they can use for all pieces of the website experience. Um, so that is a number that they ultimately fall back to. Um, but, you know, we're, we're seeing that more people care about the authorization rates as well, right? Specifically, that usually certain departments care more than than others, but certainly when you explain it, right, and you talk about, hey, common decline codes, right, and our ability to get rid of them, um, that means something really different for different, you know, verticals, as an example, right? And then they can do the math themselves um, of, okay, what is actually going to be the the net impact? Because they, for the most part, know, right, what their, what their common decline reasons are. Um, depends depends on kind of the the space that they play, um, but it is it is really important, right? If if you think about it, an authorization rate is a customer that is trying, attempting to make a transaction, and with a card of some sort, and ultimately was not able to because they you know maybe manually screwed up somewhere, right? And I should probably also say, you know, for us on the on the shopper consumer side, right? Um, and this is a part I, I get very excited about where, you know, even in some of the legacy players in the space, a lot of the work is still on the role of the shopper, right? I have to either manually input um, my all my information on right a guest checkout or whatever form that is, which is still for the most part. Or I have to create an account with one of the one of the current, you know, kind of more traditional wallets, and then I have to maintain that account, right? If I sign up for a new credit card, I have to go and then add it. Or if my card expires, I have to go and update it, right? Imagine all the card on files that you have with various um, wallets or or, or merchants. I want to take the way the work away from the the shoppers, right? Like, why do I have to? Why do I have to do that? Um, and so, you know, we are able to do that because of of the banks. But anyway, so I, I I do think you know people should be asking, hey, for the customers that want to buy my product, it took so much effort, right, for that merchant to get that shopper there. 
so much effort. We we all know this, right? Optimizing merchandising, uh, optimizing the website, landing page, so on and so forth. And so to be able to capture that customer who's literally at the point of purchase, so, so pivotal, so pivotal. And yeah, beautiful people think about it and ask those questions. And, you know, we, we try to direct that narrative as well. You talked a little bit about personalization. And I think nowadays, every mer- or every customer, every client is expecting some sort of personalized journey or yeah, I think everybody's expecting it now. And, and even as creepy as it comes, we're getting more used to them knowing more, the merchant knowing more about us as a as a consumer. Yeah. How does this help the merchant in that personalization journey? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think where we'd love for payments to be able to go is, hey, what are the payment methods that Brett and Linda wants to use with this particular retailer, right? Because we're all we're all different. We all have different preferences. And how can we help surface what you actually want to use, right? Take the work away from the shopper, take make it easier to convert on that merchant and increase that conversion and increase our um increase the shoppers's right basket size with with that merchant so ultimately i mean i think it's it plays a a a huge role personalization in improving the experience on that merchant right and i would say you know merchants that are forward thinking right that are innovative trying to stay ahead of the trends is thinking about okay well how do i incorporate specific let's say merchant offers right? Um, Credit card offers that are specific and personalized to to an individual and line that up and show that uh, right at the point of checkout. Um, So we're having a lot of those conversations as well. Linda, uh, one of the things that maybe consumers don't think about, or they think about more because of hacking attempts, is the security part. And I'm older, I can think back when we stored credit cards in Magento in open text without even encrypting. Then we went to tokenization, and now that's pretty common. Tell us a little bit about the security side of of the Skipify solution and how that protects the consumer from some of the things that happened 10, 15 years ago. I I mean, absolutely a huge uh, point of conversation, as you can imagine, as a startup working in payments where our biggest partners are literally banks and card issuers and card networks, right? It's it's a huge point of conversation, right? It's, uh, right, we, we work with the security teams, compliance teams um, at the largest organizations, right? So um, that aside, that itself has a ton of rigor. Um, But from a consumer kind of merchant standpoint, um, I'll kind of share it anecdotally, right? Um, What our what our platform does is we are recognizing your personal email address with our partners, right? Our partner network and within our own network. Um, We're using something like your email address, right? And when there is a hit with our network. Um, then we are sending a verification code to your phone number, right? So in order for someone to make a purchase that's not yourself, it's pretty complicated, right? You have to have access to that email address. You have to then also have access to that phone, Right. So there's there's multiple tiers of security built in into the flow while at the same time. And this is kind of where, you know, I think legacy um, solutions have also you know used to, to offset um, is the actual flow. Right. In, oh, man, we have to make it secure by introducing all this nuance and all these um various gates, right, that you have to pass. And all of a sudden, that user experience becomes 
pretty complicated, right? And not what this kind of um, forward-looking experience that the that the user expects. So we take into consideration, hey, we need to have this be secure, right? Which is what our bank partners expect, the merchants absolutely expect, and our shoppers expect. But at the same time, do that in a way that allows me, the shopper, to have a really good experience checking out. Um, so yeah, absolutely a conversation topic that we have all the time. What? So I know that you mentioned earlier you were a co-founder at cart.com. What, what sort of things have you brought from the actual shopping cart world into the payment world that yeah. you can talk about? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think ultimately, and the part that excites me to m the the most is that we're really talking to the same audience, right? You're talking to the e-commerce merchants, and I think what I've really loved about the startup world is getting to a point of your startup journey where you can listen to the pain points of the merchants, your customers and actually be able to solve it, right? And hopefully that's relatively early on, on, on in, you know, in your startup's journey, but that's been such a cool thing where, you know, I really, I joined Scofi because I think it solves for a lot of pain points that I heard, right, in the cart days. Um, and when we reached that point at cart, I was super excited about it. And I think we've certainly reached that point with Skibify. So now it's about, you know, sharing, sharing our vision in a broader way. Um, so that piece is is really exciting for me. You know, I'm talking to the 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 same merchants with evolving pain points from what they had previously, and now solving it in a different way. Um, but also just a lot of the you know nuts and bolts of building a startup, right? Um, it's okay. How do you use your resources? How do you think about people management? You know, how do you solve prioritization? Uh, all of these different things that um, does come from experience, right? A, a lot of startup is trial and error and you keep going, right? And so to be able to pull from the mistakes <laughs> that we made previously, as well as the, the, the areas of success, allows you to jump through those hoops faster and more accurately and more thoughtfully um in the if we look at the e-commerce space where do you think it's going not just platforms but uh into the future for how consumers work with platforms and then maybe how merchants use platforms are are we looking at more SaaS based or do you think there's still a place for platforms where they self-install or you know like magento or something like that and does it matter? I, I, I'm, I guess I'm asking rhetorical here, but it doesn't really matter for Skipify. You're going to integrate into that platform no matter where it sits. But I'm more curious about where you think some of these e-commerce platforms are going. Yeah, oh, that's, that's an interesting question. I'm trying to think about how to balance how I answer it. Um, you know, I, I think the e-commerce platforms have different strategies, right? And each of them you know, going after something that they think will will do great for them. And I think that's the right thing to do. I think for for us and where our investors get excited, you know, I get excited from a total addressable market perspective and, you know, longevity of our customer base perspective is that we are agnostic, right? Um, and, you know, we will build you know, partnerships with certain players in the space that are the the best fit fit for us, but we want to be able to work across platforms, right? And I think, you know, consumers and how they will interact, they'll go to the brands that they love, right? Um, and a lot of the times, it's it's not consumer facing. Some some choose to be some some choose to be more behind the scenes, but I think. Yeah, you actually in the beginning you asked me what I'm passionate about. I love brands that evoke a feeling for 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 shoppers, right? Whatever category that that might be in. Um, but I think consumers will continue to have loyalty to towards brands, right, and retailers. Um, and so, 
how do you, as the merchant, stay on top of、um, technology and innovations, right? And figure out what's the best case scenario for you.、Um, that's how I think about it. But it's it's ever evolving. Are you? Would you kind of like to? What would be a good thing to lean into as we're going into this next quarter? I, you know, from a Skipify perspective, just visualizing what it means to have your cards available with just your email address or or just your biometrics, right, and be able to shop online or digitally in a way that's as smooth of an experience as online. Um, and I think what I've observed in the market is, you know, even a year plus ago when I joined Skipify,、um, we weren't talking about this—the idea of an accelerated checkout, right? Nearly as much as we are now. I would say even in the last three months, it's accelerated from the standpoint of the merchant, right? So if you're a merchant or you're a partner in the ecosystem, thinking about, hey, what should we be exploring? Is this worth my time? What I'm observing from the market is that the momentum is coming and maybe is already here in a really big way.、Um, and certainly there are, you know, merchants and partners that are leading the way.、Um, but if you haven't yet, You know, it it is a great time to explore this.、Um, imagine, you know, as a shopper, right? Forget about the merchant experience of increased conversion, increased authorization rates, security.、Um, imagine as a shopper that experience, right? And for me, I joined because the idea of having my credit card surfaced, having my debit card surfaced, various payment instruments automatically felt like a no brainer. Right, and when we have conversations with prospects for the first time now, that th- that's the exact phrase that I hear back over and over again. And so, just implore you to explore this this space. Maybe is 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 my ask. Yeah, that's good. I, and PayPal is one of your investors. I, I've been I've been in PayPal programs in my previous role at the agency that we owned, where they really emphasized the payment. The the customer journey, especially on mobile, and we did a lot of mobile optimization、yeah. things in the late teens, late twenty teens, and、uh, I would imagine that PayPal offers a lot of、um, offers a lot of incentive to help push that push the envelope for better customer experience. Yes, yes. I mean, I should also probably make a plug for you know we have an incredible. Investor base, right, of strategic investors, financial investors that are just so plugged in in the ecosystem, right?、Um, and so, to have their vouch and support for what we're building more, right? Who have seen all the trends over the last, you know, decades, right?、Um, and people being one of them, it's, it's. It's very solidifying of, right of of what we're trying to build,、um, and I was also maybe I mean make it, maybe a takeaway you know certainly for 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 your audience is like building a startup is hard, right? Having conviction is hard, but it is so satisfying of a journey when you're putting out something that you believe in, right? And then you start getting your customers' feedback. And they get their customers' this feedback, right? And then you see it in the wild. I mean, every step of the way is so hard, <laughs> but so rewarding, right? And what I've loved here is like I'm doing with people that are just awesome, that are so hardworking, but are just like human, right? And it's so wonderful to 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 be able to push the envelope, push the envelope together. That's awesome, Linda. As we close out the podcast, I gave everybody a chance to do a shameless plug about anything they'd like. What would you like to plug today? Yeah,、um, you know, I would say if any of this is is interesting,、um, I you know, I 
certainly am passionate about this space. I suppose I have to be, uh, given the role that that I'm in. If you know, if you're if you're thinking about accelerator, check out. If you don't know what it is, if you're interested in Skipify, certainly. Um, but if you're, you know, broadly just like, hey, why? Sh- what's what's the intrigue in this space? Why is it heating up in, in such a big way? Um, I'm certainly uh, available to talk about it. I think you'll you'll post some of our ways to um, to reach out to me or you know anyone on the Skipify team. Um, or if you're just thinking about, you know, the startup journey, right? I'm, uh, I am I love being able to engage with the community um, and all the components of it, right? Partners certainly make a huge part of um, our success. So I, I would say I would say that. That's awesome. I'll make sure I put the your um your contact details on the show notes, and and I'm I'm assuming on the Skipify website there's some demos so people can see how the pro- merchants especially can see how well the process works. Absolutely, and our website is ever evolving. Uh, but but yes, uh, the, the team has done a great job revamping the website lately, so you can visit there. Uh, Linda Sue, it's been such a pleasure to speak to you today. Linda Sue is the com- Chief Commercial Officer with Skipify. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Brent. Talk Commerce is a production of Content Basis LLC. For more creative content, go to contentbasis.io.